Imagine, if you will, the world without sound. How would you think, dream, or remember? Today we're delving into the subject of congenital deafness, exploring the intriguing question of how those born without the sense of hearing think. Most of us process thoughts through words and sounds, but what happens when sound is absent from your world? How does the mind adapt? It's a fascinating journey we're about to embark on. Dive into the silent world of the congenitally deaf to understand their unique cognitive processes. Language for most of us forms the bedrock of our thoughts, but what happens when sound-based language is removed from the equation? Language, you see, is not just a tool for communication, it's also the medium through which many of us form and navigate our thoughts. When we think, we often engage in an internal monologue, a conversation with ourselves, if you will. For many, thoughts are essentially silent words. But imagine for a moment, if you were born deaf, never having experienced sound, let alone language. How would you think? This is the reality for people with congenital deafness. Now, you might be surprised to learn that they do indeed have an internal language. It's not based on sound, but on sight. They think in sign language. Sign language with its gestures and movements becomes their internal monologue. And this is where it gets fascinating. Sign language is a spatial and visual language. It's not linear like spoken languages. It's three-dimensional, dynamic, and vibrant. This spatial and visual nature of sign language might shape the thoughts of congenitally deaf individuals differently. For instance, they could potentially have a heightened awareness of space and movement, or they might perceive relationships between objects differently. The possibilities are captivating, aren't they? So, we see, even without auditory language, the mind finds a way to shape thoughts. Our brains are truly marvelous in their adaptability, harnessing whatever tools are available to create a rich tapestry of cognition and understanding. Now, let's delve deeper into the realm of visual thinking and spatial cognition. Visual thinking, as the name suggests, is the ability to think and understand through images. Spatial cognition, on the other hand, involves understanding and remembering the spatial relationships between objects. It's like having a mental map of your surroundings. In the case of individuals with congenital deafness, these abilities can be notably enhanced. This enhancement is often attributed to their reliance on sign language, a visually oriented language that requires a keen understanding of space and movement. When words are not heard, they are seen, and thus, the mind adapts to hear through the eyes. Research supports this fascinating concept. Studies have shown that congenitally deaf individuals often outperform their hearing counterparts in tasks involving visual attention and spatial cognition. For instance, they can be faster at locating objects in a complex visual field or better at remembering the layout of a room. What's more, this isn't merely a compensatory mechanism for the lack of auditory input. It's been suggested that the brain of a congenitally deaf individual may be wired differently in a way that emphasizes visual and spatial processing. Thus, a soundless world isn't devoid of thoughts, but rather filled with a different kind of cognitive richness. So, how does this all come together in the minds of those with congenital deafness? Let's pull it all together now. We began by asking how people born deaf think. Do they think in words like many of us do? We learned that language and thought are closely intertwined. Language forms the building blocks of our thoughts, giving shape to our ideas and experiences. For those with congenital deafness, sign language serves this purpose. Their thoughts are not silent whispers, but vibrant visual expressions. They think in signs, in a language that is as expressive and nuanced as any spoken language. This is their inner voice, their silent dialogue, their way of making sense of the world around them. We also delved into the realm of visual thinking and spatial cognition. Deaf individuals, we discovered, have heightened abilities in these areas. Their minds are adept at creating detailed mental maps and making spatial judgments. This is a testament to the brain's remarkable plasticity, its ability to adapt and compensate for sensory loss. Finally, we underscored that the thinking process of congenitally deaf individuals is just as complex and rich as anyone else's. It's different, yes, but not lesser. Their cognitive world is not one of silence and emptiness, but one filled with vibrant visuals and spatial richness. In the silence, they find their own symphony of thoughts, a testament to the incredible adaptability of the human mind. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, like, leave your comments. I wish you all love, happiness, kindness and a peaceful sky.